Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another series of hands-on sessions. My name is Ekim. Uh, we will look at the 2D finite element method project um, that you have and uh, go through the code together. Um, so um, we will have four videos in total. The first one will be uh, on the calculation of the element y stiffness. And then uh, we will take a look at the discretization of our domain. So um, the second video will be about the uh, pre-processing part. And then the third video uh, will be on processing. So we will use uh, the stiffness code we had written in the first video. Uh, in the third video. And then uh, in the last video we will take a look at the post-processing part. And... Um, so let's begin with uh, the element y stiffness. So we begin our video series um, with some element stiffness examples. Uh, so in today's video, we will take a look at these two specific elements, uh, the D2TR3N or the constant strain triangle element and uh, D2QU4N or the bilinear quadrilateral element. So um, today we will learn how to assemble the stiffness uh, of a single element uh, and then we will go from there. So uh, in our code, you can see that we have two .m files. The first one is just the runner. So uh, we have clear all, close all and etc. And uh, we have the inputs we will feed into our stiffness function okay so the runner just works to run the stiffness function and inside the stiffness.m um, we have several different uh, functions that we will use to calculate the stiffness of the specific element so let's take a look at the inputs we are going to take into the stiffness function first we have uh, x so this x is just the coordinates of the a specific element in the physical uh, space. So uh, what you see here, this x1 and y1, these are the coordinates of the first node, the second node and the third node. And this is for the uh, three node triangular element, the constant strain triangle. So um, we just input the coordinates of the corners of the element. And then this x uh, does the same thing, but for a four node element. So for the uh, quadrilateral one. And this GPE, this stands for uh, Gauss points per element. So um, what we want to do today is basically implement this line. Okay. Uh, you should have seen this in your lectures. So I won't explain what it is, but um, we have a sum over the Gauss points per element. Okay, and um, remember that for uh, different kinds of elements, we can have different number of Gauss points. Um, today, we will take a look at, uh, for the triangular one, we will just, for as an example, have one Gauss point, and for, uh, for the quadrilateral one, we will have one Gauss point, and then we also take a look at the four Gauss point per element version. And then you can implement the rest of them yourself, along with the rest of the um, element types you have seen. So um, this GP here is basically that. So because today we are looking at um, this condition, this GP is one for now, uh, and our element is three noded. So we can actually move on to uh, the stiffness function. So, um, this is the line we want to implement, right? And in this, we have different things we need to calculate. So we need to have the Jacobian, uh, we need to have the gradient of the um, shape functions in the natural space, we need to have our constitutive tensor, uh, and the determinant of uh, the Jacobian. And for uh, 
each different cost point, we need to have the weight factor. And uh, the C and ethyl values uh, of the specific cost point, too, we will need that to calculate the uh, gradient of the shape function, okay? So uh, we need these terms here, and uh, we have different functions to calculate them. So uh, the stiffness function uses those functions to assemble the stiffness of the specific element. So uh, before we see what the stiffness function does, let's take a look at the other functions that calculate this uh, this stuff. Okay. So um, uh, let's start with the Gauss point function. So um, this Gauss point function takes an input, the node per element, Gauss points per element, and GP. What is GP? So this GP is what you see here. It uh, indicates on which Gauss point you are at in your calculation. So um, for the triangular one, today it will just be one. Uh, for, and for the quadrilateral one, it can be either one or one, two, three, four. Okay. And see that we have different values of xi and eta and alpha for different Gauss points. So this Gauss point function uh, extracts these xi, eta, and alpha information. Okay. So it first checks uh, if our node per, per element is four. So uh, it basically checks the type of the element we have. So if it is four, we are looking at the quadrilateral one. And uh, if Gauss per element is one, we are looking at this table. It sets C to zero, eta to zero, and the weight factor to four. So alpha is a weight factor here. Okay. And uh, else if, so uh, for the quadrilateral element, we can also have four Gauss points. Uh, if it is four, we need to check uh, which Gauss point we are looking at. Uh, for the single Gauss point one, we didn't because we don't have any other uh, Gauss point possibilities. But uh, for this one, we need to check. So uh, this if condition does that. So if GP is one, uh, we are at the first Gauss point. Our xi should be minus one over the square root of three, and uh, eta should be that as well. And our alpha should be one. And we write that here. And else if GP is two, so we are looking at the second Gauss point now, we write the corresponding uh, xi and eta values and the alpha value. And we do that for every Gauss point here. Okay, and then we end our if condition and uh, the alter if condition as well. And then we check if uh, it could have been an else here too, but it doesn't really matter. If a uh, node per element uh, is not four, we check if it is three. So uh, in three, we are looking at only one ghost point. So we just say, uh, we don't have to check for GP now, the small GP. We just say C is one over three, eta is one over three, and alpha is one. Okay, so um, the ghost point function basically does that. Uh, it extracts the information of C, eta, and alpha for uh, the specific Gauss point you're looking at. So, um, and why do we need that? Well, uh, if you take a look uh, at the um, relation for the stiffness function, first we need to find the alpha of the specific uh, GP. So, well, we have it here now, right? We have extracted that. And secondly, uh, to calculate the um, gradient of the shape function, uh, and from that the Jacobian, we also need the values of xi and eta. Okay, so we will actually come to that now. Uh, the next function we are going to look at is this one, uh, grad n nat. So this is the gradient of n the shape function in the natural space. 
So uh, what this function do does is it basically gives us this matrix here. Okay. Um, so it takes input the node pair element, xi and eta. Why? Um, because you also have these tables uh, in your lecture notes, so you can check those too. Um, I didn't write the um, shape functions themselves. I wrote their gradient because we, we don't really need the shape functions here. We okay. So um, for the for noded element, see that uh, the values of the gradient depend on xi, uh, so xi and eta. So we need the uh, values of xi and eta for uh, the specific um, gauss point we are looking at. And um, if we take a look at the constant strain triangle, we see that the values don't depend uh, on xi and eta. But this is a very specific case. So for every other element you have, uh, they will be dependent on xi and eta. So uh, we take them in as input. And um, we start assembling this um, matrix. So what we do is actually we just write these values into the corresponding uh, places in the matrix, okay? So um, we set our PD22, um, which, uh, I mean, if you want to automate it, you can also take in the coordinates as input and then uh, look at the number of uh, columns if I'm yeah if I'm not mistaken yeah the columns so uh, you can also do that but we don't need to do that because we know our problem dimension is two in this case but if you want to implement this for um, different dimensions you could do that so um, then uh, we initialize a result so this result is uh, this matrix here uh, or this, this one. Okay, so we just call it result and then we check. So uh, this node per element is three or four. This actually checks for the type of the uh, element again. So if it is three, we go to the triangular element and uh, we start writing the uh, derivatives of uh, the shape function. Okay, so one, this one goes to result one to one. So here, this zero goes to result one to two. So here, and etc. Uh, so this if condition does basically that. And uh, as if for, so we are at the four noded element now. We just write these expressions uh, in the corresponding placement so results uh, result one to one minus one over four uh, one minus eta exactly that right uh, result one to two one over four one minus eta this and so on so uh, basically we just calculate the um, gradient of the shape function in the natural space uh, using the specific c and eta values uh, for the gauss point we are evaluating our uh, expression at okay so um we have so let's go back to our expression now we have our um, n uh, from this n we can calculate our jacobian um sorry uh, we also have our um our weight factor. So uh, what's left is to calculate the constitutive um, tensor. Okay, so we have a function, well, two functions to do just that. So let's look at this delta function first. It's uh, nothing uh, interesting actually, it's just this uh, Kronecker delta we have, so uh, inside the constitutive relation. So. Um, what we call delta here is uh, it's just a Kronecker delta. So uh, I J are the uh, for this A D or B C indices of Kronecker delta, and 
as you know, if they are equal, delta should be 1 and else. So if they are not equal, delta should be 0. Okay. So uh, we use this to calculate our constitutive uh, tensor or the uh, elements of the constitutive tensor with uh, respect to the nodes and uh, the directions. So um, uh, it takes in i, j, k, and l as indices, so they, they just correspond to a, b, c, d. And uh, we set, uh, uh, here you can see that we, as uh, constants, we have our Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, so uh, we just set those values here. And then we, uh, we move on to calculating e. Uh, well, we call it c here because it's constitutive and we don't want it to be uh, mistaken with uh, Young's modulus, so we just write this relation here. So e over 2 uh, 1 plus nu times uh, now delta ad. So this a should correspond to i now, the first in this, uh, and d should correspond to l, so delta il. And uh, delta jk, so bc plus delta ik, AC and delta JL BD. Okay. And lastly, we write uh, this expression E times nu over 1 minus nu squared. And again, our two deltas. So um, IJ, AB, KL, CD. Okay. So now we have everything we need to evaluate this expression. But that expression itself is not quite straightforward. So let's actually take a look at what it is. So um, the stiffness function or the stiffness matrix we want to um, end up with is this big stiffness matrix you, you see here. Okay, And um, the indices of this k, so this i and j, these correspond to the node numbers. Okay, so this big K, this big K is actually made up of small Ks that are stiffnesses between two nodes. So K11 is a stiffness between node 1 and, uh, and node 1, uh, 1, 2, node 1 and node 2, 1, 3, node 1 and node 3, and etc. Okay, and these small Ks, these are not. Uh, these are not numbers, these are uh, two by two matrices themselves. So um, they're two by two because um, they uh, correspond to the problem dimension. So for every uh, direction of the node, you also have a stiffness value. So now we have kijxx, kijxy, uh, and etc. So if we plug in these small uh, kij values in here, we get our big stiffness matrix. So um, let me repeat it. This i and j, they are the known numbers and these a and c, they correspond to the direction. So they can be x and y or uh, 1 and 2 in our code respectively. Okay. So um, let's see actually how the stiffness matrix assembles, uh, how the stiffness function assembles the stiffness matrix. Okay, so um, again, remember that we take in uh, our coordinates in the physical space and the gauss per element as input. And uh, if you recall, for most of, I mean, some of these functions, we need the node per element. And we extract that from the uh, coordinate matrix, so uh, size x comma 1, it should give us the number of rows. So for a three-noded element, we should have three nodes, uh, rows, and etc. And PD is size x comma 2, so the number of columns. And uh, here, uh, we take the transpose of x and call it core. Uh, because we will need that in our calculations and it's just uh, it just makes uh, writing the code easier. So. Um, specifically, we will need it uh, in the calculation of the Jacobian 
So here we have the um, transpose of our original uh, coordinate matrix. So that's why we um, give it a name here. And then we initialize our big K, so this one. So it should be a uh, number of, uh, uh, sorry, node per element times PD by node per element times PD. Why? Because we have, uh, for every node, we have a small K. And in, inside every K, we have uh, a K value that corresponds to the direction. So direction times the number of, uh, or the dimension times the number of nodes uh, should be, uh, well, for a triangular one, it should be six. And for uh, the quadrilateral one, it should be four. Uh, sorry, eight. Okay, so um, let's see. Remember these ij uh, indices? So uh, we have those exact things here in, in for loops. Why? Because we want to calculate the uh, kij for every ij value. And they go from one to node per element. Why? Because they correspond to the nodes, right? So uh, for a triangular one, they should go from one to three. And we initialize a, a small k here. So we initialize this matrix. And it should always be PD by PD, no matter the uh, number of nodes. Um, so, and we can actually proceed with uh, this calculation now, the summation. So um, to do that, we have a for loop over GP uh, from one to uh, Gauss points per element. So it just signifies or corresponds to this summation, one to GP. And for uh, every GP value, we first, uh, well, here we calculate the Jacobian. Uh, here we calculate the gradient of the shape function. Um, and all the other stuff we need to well, ha have to evaluate this expression. So we first um, begin with initializing our Jacobian. So as you know, it should be uh, PD times PD, right? So zeros PD times PD. And then we initialize something called grad. So this grad here is, um, if you take a look at here, this thing inside the square bracket, uh, j inverse transpose dot n. Uh, that, that is what we call grad. We just uh, call it that to, again, make it easier to write the code. So first we need to, uh, in order to evaluate the uh, gradient of the shape function, we need to have the information about the Gauss point we're at. So we call on our Gauss point function and for our specific Gauss point, GP, we read the um, values of Xi, Eta, and Alpha. And then um, we move on to um, calculating this matrix. So this grad uh, net is our gradient of the um, shape function. So we just call on its uh, specific function and uh, just read the uh, resulting matrix. And lastly, uh, well not lastly, but uh, next we calculate the Jacobian. So as you can see, it is this matrix times the uh, transpose of uh, n. So uh, this matrix we had called core. So it's just core times uh, grad net transpose. And then uh, we fill in our uh, the grad we had initialized. So, um, uh, as I said, grad is this thing. So we just uh, take the inverse of the Jacobian and its transpose, so this term, and then multiply it with grad net. Okay, so we have the th uh, thing inside the square bracket, and this as well. So what's actually left to do is just write this expression and then evaluate it uh, according to the i, j, a, c, and b, d indices. So um, here we uh, have the four loops that do that. So uh, as you know, a 
CVD, they all correspond to the problem dimension, so uh, they are a loop over 1 to PD. <coughs> and inside them, uh, we calculate the specific, uh, specific elements of this small k. Okay, so when uh, i and j is a specific number, uh, and when a and c is also a specific number. So for example, if um, these uh, i and j are 1 and 1, we are looking at uh, this k 1 1, uh, and a and c are also 1 1, so we are looking at k uh, 1 1 xx. Okay, uh, so uh, for a and c, 1 means x, 2 means y. Okay. So uh, for this one, we again have a loop, uh, two loops over b and d. So uh, we evaluate this expression for uh, the different um, values of b and d, and we add them up because it's a summation. So um, as you can see here, um, let me. Okay, actually this is fine. So we just write this thing. So uh, kac, so a and c, they actually correspond to, well, if it's 1, 1, it should be k, small k, 1, 1, right? And 1, 2, small k, 1, 2, and etc. So k and a comma c is itself plus um, what we called grad, this thing, and it has the indices b and i. So uh, it's row, should be B, and its column should be I, be careful with that, times uh, our uh, the element of our constitutive tensor. So we call on our uh, constitutive function, and we just write A, B, well, these should be C and D. Yes. Um, and, um, we have, uh, again, we have our grad function now with d comma j. Lastly, the determinant of j and uh, the specific alpha we have uh, extracted from the Gauss point function. Uh, and remember that if our, um, if our element is triangular, there is also a 1 over 2 factor here. So um, we add that to. So uh, this version is for the triangular element, and this is without the um, 1 over 2 factor. It's for the quadrilateral one. So uh, here mostly done. Um, what we have calculated at the end of this is this small k for ij. And uh, we need to then place it inside our big stiffness matrix, the capital K. So this line does that. Let's see what it does. So um, the first uh, index of K is, it, it's the row, right? So um, we're looking at the uh, row placement of this uh, sorry, this k. So we are going to place it uh, like two by two matrices here. Okay, like this. So um, let's see, when i is one, this thing is just one, right? So from one to uh, one times pd, two. So from one to two, uh, sorry, rows. And uh, again, uh, this thing should be one when j is one and then this is two so uh here rows from one to two and columns from one to two we place uh, k11 kij okay and you can uh, try different ij's they i mean what what this basically does it it skips a pd uh, in both uh, rows and columns for every uh, different k, uh, small k matrix, okay, so that you can place them 
like uh, quadruples here. Um, and then we just say that that is equal to the small k we have calculated at the end of these, well, uh, at the end of this um, summation over the Gauss points. And we just say our output at the very end of the function. So this is the end of the stiffness function. Uh, our output is the big K, the stiffness of the whole element. So um, let's run it. Um, but this is the this is uh, the triangular element. So let's check is our yeah okay we have our one over two factor here, so it should be correct. And this is what we get. Um, and similarly, let's try the uh, four noded one. Yeah, we get a uh, we get an eight by eight stiffness matrix, right? Um, so two times PD times the number of nodes. Uh, and let's change the uh, Gauss points so it can be four, right? Let's run it and we see a different uh, stiffness matrix. Okay, so uh, as a sanity check, you can take a look at your stiffness matrix and uh, notice that the diagonal uh, elements are all positive and uh, the matrix itself is um, symmetric. So these are just some checks you can do to uh, verify the uh, validity of your Yeah, of your code. So I'm recording this part after I've uh, gone over the video myself. So uh, I just realized that um, while calculating the stiffness for the four uh, noded one, um, here I didn't change the uh, one over two factor, so it should have been like this. Yeah. Uh, so if we run it again, first check out the uh, one cost point version uh, you should get this and and four yep these uh, should be correct and the reason I wanted to clarify this is uh, because uh, you can actually use these values you see here to check if your code is correct or not you can run the same um, coordinates as I did and um, that way you can verify uh, your code. So uh, that's basically it. And uh, in the next video, uh, we will take a look at how, um, how to discretize our domain and uh, basically have uh, like elements like these, but uh, a lot of them in a single domain. Okay, so uh, see, you, see you in the next video.